On this episode of Top Gear, I give my first impressions of an award-winning kayak, one that some dub as the first smart kayak, but most importantly, the first kayak of its kind to take advantage of SpotLock technology with the help of a 45-pound thrust Minn Kota trolling motor. Stick around. Top Gear starts now. My name's Chris Castro, and I am a kayak angler. And through my early humble beginnings, I found myself eventually writing for some of the best magazines in the industry, competing against not only kayaks, but boaters, and winning. Some know me for the Texas Selfish, others know me for the Cobia, but what they don't know about me is I love gear. Pretty fierce little knife. Um, this is straight from Johnson, and oh man, dude, I'm dude, I'm so stoked. This kayak, dude, is gonna be a trout killing machine. That's a sharp knife, boys. I mean, I know it's plastic, but that's a sharp knife, dude. This is the only knife that actually scares me that I own. The Autopilot 13.6. I know absolutely nothing about it other than the fact that it's heavy and now I know why. I'm breathing hard, yes. Um, I think this is the Minn Kota motor. This is where you put the battery. I, I need to get this kayak sort of like on display to better kind of show you guys. I mean, this is real raw behind the scenes here, but. All right guys, so remember this is our first impressions here of the Autopilot 13.6. 13 foot 6 inches, but uh, let's start bow to stern. So the first thing that I'm looking at here, which is interesting, is a lot of guys probably wouldn't even look at this, but the way that this lip right here is sort of comes out and recesses, I kind of like that. I think that's going to help kind of bounce a little water out right here sharply at the point. Uh, the uh, handle, good position, sort of uh, in deep, right? So it's kind of like in a little small cavity right here. I like that, kind of good confidence, kind of grippy feel to it, like that. It's pretty interesting. I don't know if y'all can see that. That's probably, I'm assuming, if you want to lay down some rods, you'll have a lot better or an easier time doing so, or maybe like a push pole or something, because this kayak definitely does have the size to push pole around, and it definitely has the capability. So obviously the, the prize of this kayak is the Minn Kota motor. It is the iPilot, GPS enabled. Uh, this thing is absolutely sick. It is state of the art. And one of the reasons why I'm featuring it on our top gear is because this kayak is the award winning kayak uh, for kayak of the year. This is a 2021 model. And man, I'm just, uh, I'm pumped, dude. You know, it, it's, it's good to have like the latest and greatest technology in this industry and I'm super stoked. Uh, and, and also fortunate to be able to share it with you guys. Yeah, we're gonna see what this thing can do. I'm gonna come back to this here in a second. I just obviously wanna show you guys the uh, position of this. It is forward, it's on a plate, super simple. Like, you don't even need a manual. I mean, this clip right here, you just clip it in, slide it in, it's all self-locking. And to undo it, you just pull this out. As simple as that. Um, looks like everything is pre-wired on this kayak. And uh, what is the dead giveaway is basically this, you know, all this plug and play stuff. You can obviously see uh, that there's electrical that goes in and this hatch, which is kind of doubles down. You could probably even put a battery in there. Um, if I can stick you guys in here, there's pre-wiring there. Now where that pre-wiring goes is, you know, it, the longer I do this and the more complicated kayak fishing gets, I'm all about wire management and this thing is it answers that so all this wiring goes to the back where the battery box is we'll definitely get to that here in a second um, inside the cockpit man you got a lot of room dude I think if you're a fly fisherman this is pretty legit uh, you got a lot of room here to play with stand up uh, if you choose not to use this drive well 
you've got that and you can remove it cover it up bungee it down and off you go into the paddle world i will say that i did take a couple things out of here uh there's a key ring here that connects there and goes to this little pulley system which answers what this does which we'll go to here in a second but the reason i'm saying that and the reason i'm saying that there was a key there is because that key doubles down when you get this kayak it's not going to come with this prop you're going to have to put it on uh, you'll get a little pin and then you just close that in and it fits the prop nice and flush looks like right here we have two preset uh, wire through holes which basically means that you can undo all this run all your fish finder wires plug here and again you probably run it i guess wherever you want inside this hole into your battery system because nobody likes to drill holes through kayaks these days man like we already want them ready to go and uh, this kayak definitely answers that We've got our slide tracks We've got our foot pegs here which is interesting a lot of kayaks these days still especially like this type don't really have foot driven rudders i mean some of them do but most of them don't that tells me that this is a pure 100 percent hands-free right so when we talk about hands-free whenever the pedal industry came in we were they're always talking about hands-free but it really wasn't 100 percent hands-free uh you still had to pedal and you still had to use your knob so your your one arm was pretty much i would say like 50 to 80 percent occupied especially if you're dealing with current uh, but with this your feet do all the, the driving and that leaves your hands for 100 percent hands free two things i like that stick out the flush mount holders you got two of them i don't know if you guys can see over there that is my big water 13 2 i've only got one on one side and the other side I, I don't have that so i'm stoked about that got two capabilities here now to hold rods and not only that but they've added one but two holders I, I don't know what this is yet that may be a kill switch or something uh and then this is i don't know what that is either but that's like a little cup link that's maybe for some storage storage you could put sleeves in there and it's my understanding you could put like a, a board here and, and lay it uh sideways so it's out of your way seat looks super comfortable it's got two levels which i'm super excited about because like on my uh big water 13.2 and predators that i've had in the last three years uh i've always been in that high seat position but you guys know i love to paddle also so having the ability to go low and high is a big plus for me uh, this hatch may look similar to what is on the uh, predator and big water 13 2 drive so they've actually relocated this or rather they kept the same design and relocated this and stuck it right here um, which i think is awesome handles same old good already battle proven old town handles very similar to ocean kayak handles since them being sister companies uh, the seat pulls up and this is where things get interesting so this is your box for your battery and you know it's my understanding you can there's two different types of batteries you can get you can get the lead acid and you can get uh, the lithium ion which i'm familiar with uh, the important thing on either one of those is to make sure that it's a uh, deep cycle so you know obviously lithium ion would be the way to go you'll use about 90 percent of your battery whereas if you use a, a lead acid i think you only get like 50 percent use uh, even at 100 amp hour so uh, it's real important real key to understand make sure it's a deep cycle and all that good stuff uh, what i like about it man also is that everything's just here you got your negative your positive all your wiring is pre-ran you connect it to an already install installed plug and all that power is already driven forward for you we still got the famous back hatch here which i like we can easily use it two additional flush mount rod holders and they're in the angle position which is awesome and a huge back tank well man this is like this is more than what i need um if i got a small buddy i can probably fit him back here definitely put my son back here and take him on a stroll bungee system flush mount i kind of just quickly pop these in just to make sure that uh, they do work with rail blazer mounts and uh, rod holders and all that good stuff which they do directly at the stern we've got a huge rudder blade which is good helps uh for that tight turning the bigger the rudder the more water displacement so the quicker you turn especially uh, important on bigger kayaks one drain plug here got our rudder handle here 
to engage and disengage the rudder. Nothing new on this side. Here's the other uh, cup holder I was telling you guys about. And here's that other thing. I, I don't know, it's a cool little place for like hooks and stuff like that, I guess. Weights, whatever, whatever have you. All right, so let's talk a little bit about this drive. Um, very easy to engage and disengage. You can basically, this drawstring, which the first thing that came to my mind as I'm thinking is that, man, this is definitely gonna wear and tear throughout the years, but it's already pre-wired. So replacing this down the line is looking like it's gonna be super feasible as long as you sort of fish tape them together or something to draw the old out and bring in the new in the future. I'm always thinking about the future, you know, what's gonna last uh, and what isn't. You know, a lot of plastic on boats can be a bad thing, so I'm always looking at that as well. This little clip anchors to that and pull it down to engage. And then you sort of just drop that in play and it's there. I don't think you really have to worry about anything else besides that. Uh, and then to re-engage it, and then to pick it up, uh, you just simply pop it and go. The clearance. Um, I'm curious about the clearance. So you guys have seen all my other Top Gear and behind the scenes episodes where I'm very particular on the clearance of this. It looks like I'm gonna be in some pretty decent shallow water. So by default on my other systems, I think my rudder would actually stop here and then the motor's down here, which gives me about a foot and a half, maybe two feet of play. And that's why I've choked up on a lot of my, uh, my other electric motors on, on my other kayaks. So it's a problem that's easily fixable. You just gotta make some adjustments. But this is actually, like that's already a pretty good shallow runner it looks. Just looking at it right there. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. I mean, I'm willing to bet I can get in a good foot of water. Um, you know, give or take. So, looking at the undercarriage, it's pretty interesting stuff. That'll tie directly into my hummingbird. This has a W-shaped hole design, which is good for stability. Displaces water and should run shallow. Uh, man, dude, this is uh, pretty interesting. I've never been in a hole like this before. Never really needed to. We don't normally look for holes that are this design in a pedal kayak. There's no need. But on something much bigger like this, something that's drawing power and pushing, obviously more weight, it has its benefits. Almost has like a, almost has like a natural skid here, which is probably good for tracking and lots of scupper. I'm interested to see how much water pushes through those as we're going. Not bad, not bad. Lots of room. I need to install that. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, that is the that is the autopilot 13.6. First impressions are that it comes with a lot of customization. I'm going to have a lot of options. I'm going to have a lot of fun. Um, it, it is heavy. I will say that. I'm not used to heavy kayaks, but everybody that I've talked to has said what a wonderful vessel it is. And it is just, it's state of the art. Like this is dubbed, uh, some people call it a smart kayak. Uh, just because of its GPS capabilities and its stop lock technology. Uh, it being able to just anchor you without an anchor is is crazy so and that's super key like for me i hate using anchors um i always have used my drive to maintain my positioning or have done a lot of circles around certain key structure areas or to pick off fish now i get the best of both worlds i don't necessarily have to anchor i can use the spot lock technology that's did i say stop lock earlier all right guys so that's my first impressions of the old town sportsman autopilot 13.6 I have not ever taken this thing on the water. I've never seen one in person. I've never been around one. I've never even smelt one. Like this is just pure raw first impressions. And I'm stoked to uh, bring this to you guys and, and we're gonna all have fun with it. So y'all stick around. Let me know what you guys think. I will have a full review once I get enough water time on it. 
and uh, we'll talk about all kinds of things how i'm gonna rig it how i'm gonna apply it and so on and so on so comment below guys let me know what you guys think of the old town sportsman autopilot 13.6 and uh, what would you like to know about it maybe i'll integrate that in our next future video so long guys